Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Nagra, and I'm a naturopathic doctor in Vancouver, BC, with a focus on diet and lifestyle. On this episode of Live Kindly with me, we're going to be debunking egg nutrition. Now I know what you're going to say, eggs have a ton of nutrition, and while it is true that eggs do offer some nutrition, there are certainly much healthier and more nutritious options that are also better for the environment and the animals. Before we fully dive into this video, please be advised that this is just for educational purposes. It does not replace medical advice, and if you are planning to change your diet, please consult with a healthcare provider first. So the first question we have to ask is what is an egg? And eggs are produced by hens, of course, and it starts with a yolk that is produced in the ovaries of the hen. This then travels to the oviduct where it may become fertilized by a sperm cell, but regardless of fertilization, it travels down the oviduct where the egg whites, the caleza, which is that white stringy portion you'll see on the outside of yolks, and the shell, which is about 40% calcium, is added. It is also important to note that in the wild, chickens would lay anywhere from 10 to 40 eggs per year, and nowadays we've selectively bred them to lay about 250 to 300 eggs a year. So that's going from almost you know, one a month all the way up to nearly one a day. And this is incredibly taxing on their bodies and can lead to a host of health problems, including osteoporosis, because as I mentioned, the shell is predominantly calcium and they're expelling that calcium on almost a daily basis. Of course, there are two nutritional components of an egg. There's the egg white and the egg yolk. Now the whites contain most of the protein, about four grams per large egg but they contain very little in the way of minerals or vitamins. Now, moving on to the yolks, that is where most of the nutritional value is. And these are the B vitamins, choline, selenium, a small amount of vitamin D, but of course they also come packaged with a ton of cholesterol, which is one of the concerns. So if we consider a whole egg, um, according to the USDA food database, one large egg contains approximately six grams of protein, 169 milligrams of choline, 260 micrograms of lutein and zeaxanthin, which are carotenoids important for eye health, 300 international units of vitamin A, 16 micrograms of selenium, and 50 international units of vitamin D, which is only about 8% of the RDA. Now, contrary to many claims, it contains next to no omega-3s sitting at just 0.22 grams per large egg. In addition to the potentially beneficial nutrients, a large egg also contains 1.6 grams of saturated fat and roughly 200 milligrams of cholesterol, which aren't nutrients we necessarily want much of. One of the primary components of discussion, of course, is dietary cholesterol, as eggs are one of the main sources. Now, dietary cholesterol has been shown time and time again to raise our LDL, or bad cholesterol levels, as it's sometimes known. And this has been demonstrated in three separate meta-analyses, uh, most recently just in 2020. With all that being said, the question becomes, do eggs actually raise cardiovascular disease risk? Do they raise the risk of having, say, a heart attack or a stroke? Similar to much of the research on dairy, unfortunately, there is very little high quality data on eggs. And this is highlighted no better than in a recent meta-analysis that came out in January of 2021. So they used several studies that did what we call an over-adjustment. So they actually adjusted for or your LDL or your serum cholesterol level. So that's the cholesterol level in your bloodstream. And what that does is it removes the impact of eggs. So if eggs raise your risk of cardiovascular disease by raising your cholesterol levels or your LDL levels, but you make sure everybody you're comparing has the same LDL level, you're never gonna see an association between eggs and cardiovascular disease, right? If A leads to B and B leads to C, but you just remove B altogether, you're never gonna see a connection between A and C. And that's exactly one of the issues here, but there are more. One of the other issues is that they looked at populations where egg intake is associated with socioeconomic status. So people who were eating less eggs were overall more likely to be malnourished, have less access to healthcare, um, and just be less financially stable, which is something that has been associated with health outcomes as well. On top of that, some studies looked at low intakes compared to low intakes, right? So if you're looking at people eating two eggs a week versus those eating five eggs a week, you might not see much of a difference in risk as opposed to say comparing two eggs a week versus seven days a week or you know every single day, that's gonna obviously lead to a greater risk. And so they just didn't really account for that. And then the final issue with this paper was that it seems that they may have actually imported some of the wrong numbers from the very studies that they're citing. So they didn't even accurately do that kind of analysis, which can obviously skew the results one way or the other. 
Fortunately, we do have some studies that correct for most or all of these issues I mentioned earlier, and one such study was done in 2019, where they looked at 29,615 individuals followed for 17 and a half years, and they found that each additional half egg per day increased the risk of cardiovascular disease by 6%. Another very recent study that just came out here in 2021 looked at 521,120 people followed for an average 16 years. And they found that, again, each additional half egg per day increased the risk of dying from cardiovascular disease, cancer, or all causes by 7% each. So that is a substantial increase in risk for really a, a relatively small increase in egg consumption. A topic of less debate is actually the association between eggs and type 2 diabetes. So eggs have fairly consistently been associated with type 2 diabetes, particularly in American populations, and this is highlighted by three meta-analyses, one in 2013, 2016, and another in 2020. And the risk, depending on the study you look at, can be anywhere from an 18% increased risk to a 42% increased risk of type 2 diabetes in those eating one or more egg per day. The most important question you can ask in all of nutrition research is compared to what? Are you comparing that food to an Oreo cookie or processed meat, or are you comparing it to tofu or lentils? Right? What you're comparing to can determine whether or not you're going to increase risk. And fortunately, we've had multiple substitution analyses that have come out over these past couple years that look at what actually happens when you replace eggs with other foods. This particular study looked at 29,682 people followed for about 19 years and assessed their dietary and lifestyle habits to determine what happens when you swap out one food with another. Now the foods that they looked at were eggs, processed meat, unprocessed red meat, poultry, fish, nuts, legumes, and whole grains. Astonishingly, this study found that replacing eggs with just about any other food other than processed meat led to reductions in cardiovascular disease and or all-cause mortality. Now that was just for one egg a week. If you were to replace one egg per day with one of these other foods, it led to even more substantial reductions in, again, cardiovascular disease and or all-cause mortality, with nuts leading to the greatest benefit of a 22% lower risk of all-cause mortality. And in fact, plants as a whole performed excellent, especially for cardiovascular disease. So if you're looking to ditch eggs and try something else instead, there are multiple plant-based options on the market now. Um, if you're looking for absolute egg replacements, there is Just Egg, which is made from mung bean. There's also another company, Follow Your Heart, that has their own vegan egg as well, and there are many, many more popping up all the time. Of course, you can also try more whole food options like tofu if you're making a tofu scramble. And just a small 85 gram serving of tofu has about 8 grams of protein, which is more than an egg right there. Um, as well as chickpea flour, which can work really well for something like an omelette. And you can flavor these foods with things like black salt and nutritional yeast to give that color and flavor of something like an egg. Also, if you're looking to make a recipe, whether it's baking or something else, and you want an egg alternative in there, you can try things like applesauce, ripe mashed bananas, aquafaba, which is the liquid from soaking legumes, usually chickpeas, and ground flax in water can make what's called a flax egg, and it can work as a binding agent. Um, and of course, provides far more omega-3 than you would get from eggs, sitting at 1.4 grams per tablespoon. To demonstrate how you can absolutely make a really nutritious plant-based egg meal, I'm gonna highlight the nutrition from a Live Kindly recipe by Nikki for a chickpea omelet, and you can find the recipe at the link in the description. In just one serving, which is half of the recipe, you would get over 100% of your daily needs of vitamins B1, B2, B3, and B6. You would get over half of your daily iron needs, over a quarter of your daily folate, vitamins A, E, C, potassium, and selenium needs, about 40 milligrams of choline, you would get 14 grams of fiber, which is roughly what an American gets in an entire day, and of course, just one meal. You'd get 18 grams of protein, about four grams of saturated fat, and of course, you would get zero cholesterol because plants don't contain any. Now, for comparison's sake, if we were to replace the nutritional yeast and the flours, which make up the egg component of this recipe, with actual eggs, let's say two eggs per serving, you would actually get substantial reductions in most B vitamins, in iron, potassium, and fiber. You'd be getting roughly four grams less protein per serving, but you would bump up the selenium, the choline, get nearly twice as much saturated fat, which isn't necessarily a good thing, and obviously far more cholesterol. So it should be clear, while eggs may be nutritious and a better option compared to something like ultra processed foods, when compared to nutritious and truly health promoting foods like legumes, they clearly fall fat with regard to overall nutrition and disease risk. I'm Dr. Nagra for Live Kindly. Please let me know in the comments down below what you learned today. Let us know what nutrition topics you'd like us to cover next. And of course, please like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you get notified about future videos.